It was late October. Kate McClure had just ran out of gas off of I-95 in Port Richmond. Pulled over to the side of the road as far as I could and I was going to get out and walk to the nearest gas station. She had no gas and no money, but John Bobbitt was there living in this barren landscape of used needles, old mattresses and graffiti. He gave up his last 20 bucks and got her gas. McClure was moved. When you started to really see the person inside of Johnny, like it was, you were just blown away. Like he was such a normal, nice, caring guy. She and her boyfriend, Mark D'Amico, went back to see Bobbitt a few days later. They said they couldn't stop thinking of the homeless veteran. They bought him some food and clothing. We got him like granola bar type of things and um, we, he opened the box and he was like, do you guys want one? <laughs> It's just, he's just such a caring guy. He's just such a nice guy. But the Florence Township couple felt they needed to do more. They set up a GoFundMe account in November. The dollar figure exploded. Soon, it was over a couple hundred thousand dollars. It was the frigid holiday season. McClure and D'Amico got Bobbitt a hotel room. $1,764. That changes my life right there. $1,764. That changes my life. The staggering dollar figure ended after Bobbitt decided to stop the fundraising, saying it was too much. The total, a tad over $400,000. Before leaving this den of despair and addiction, Bobbitt expressed worry to his friends on the streets. You don't want to ruin an opportunity. The GoFundMe fundraiser claimed Bobbitt would get a trust and a home. But as winter began to thaw, Bobbitt didn't have a home, but rather a camper parked on McClure and D'Amico's property. I have to ask them for everything. It was kind of, in the beginning it was a joke, like they were like my parents. But the joke stops being funny after a while. Several months would go by. Bobbitt says a pickup truck was also purchased, but neither in his name. He says he received $500 increments from the couple, and he admits he used some of the money on drugs. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. You know, obviously Mark has made claims that he was worried that you were going to spend the money on drugs. I can understand that. that. What do you I, say to that? No, I can, I can understand that. I, I can't, you know. But at the same time, I don't feel he had a right to be the person to make that call. In January, Action News received a tip that McClure and D'Amico were spending some of that money on themselves, taking lavish trips, shopping sprees, and gambling. We began following them through their social media accounts. The two celebrated New Year's Eve in Las Vegas. They partied atop the Delano Hotel at Skyfall. They took helicopter rides through the Grand Canyon and gambled. McClure was all smiles with shopping bags in hand, and we couldn't help but notice the very expensive Louis Vuitton handbag she began to sport on her arm. She appeared to travel to New York and indicated she had front row tickets to a Broadway show. I figured I knew who was paying for it, but I didn't know what to do. So far, there's no proof McClure and D'Amico didn't use their own money for the questionable items. McClure makes $43,000 a year as a secretary with the New Jersey Department of Transportation. D'Amico is a carpenter, but Bobbitt says he rarely worked and often gambled. He is a self-described gambling addict. I think it's pretty hypocritical for you to tell me I can't manage my money because I might spend it on drugs. <laughs> It was the feel-good story of generosity that swept the nation. In broadcast and published reports, D'Amico and McClure have said they never spent a dime of the GoFundMe money, except 500 bucks at a casino that D'Amico says he quickly repaid with winnings. He goes a lot. He goes a lot. And if he's not at a casino, he's doing it on his phone. Bobbitt says in March, tensions began to build between the three. He didn't like living on the couple's property. But he claims D'Amico told him the money was tied up in a trust. Finally went to him at one point and was like, so if I can't access the money, I'd like to sell the camper and buy a cheaper camper, a vehicle, and I'd still have some money left to move and get on my feet. So we sell the camper, and then Mark tells me now he's planning on allotting me the money. 
that just kind of throws the whole plan out of the window. Bobbitt says his drug addiction was as strong as ever. He said he and the couple made plans for him to go to rehab out of state. But Bobbitt admits he bailed and never went. They got pretty upset that I didn't go to it. Um, very upset. And come to find out, like, two days later, that's when the BMW was purchased. So I kind of feel like they wanted me out of the state when the car was purchased. Soon, Bobbitt was broke, homeless, and again drowning in his heroin addiction. That is until the law firm Cozen O'Connor decided to represent him pro bono. Chris Fallon is an attorney who does work for homeless veterans. If they had bought him a house and, and set up the two trusts that they said they were going to do, then we wouldn't be here today. And that didn't happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. As Labor Day approached, the Bobbitt case was in the courts. D'Amico and McClure said in broadcast and published reports, well over $100,000 remained. And their attorney told New Jersey Superior Court Judge Paula Dow, Bobbitt had received well over $200,000 in cash, goods, and services. They have said they will have a forensic accountant. They have said they're lying fine with the trustee. They have said they'll open up the books. What more can they do? I would urge anybody to withhold judgment until that's been made public. Dow ordered the couple to produce financial records and turn over any remaining money into escrow. A day later, Bobbitt and his attorneys would get staggering news on a conference call with the judge. The money was gone. Quite frankly, the counsel represented that the money was all gone. I'm not sure that I accept that it's all gone. That's because according to court records on Monday, August 27th, D'Amico allegedly sent Bobbitt a text that read in part, Yo, I say I get rid of my team of lawyers, you get rid of yours, and Kate and I will write you a check. Seriously. The text went on to say, they're going to put it in the trust, man. You're going to end up with nothing. By now, the case was garnering the interest of law enforcement. And in the early morning hours of September 6th, the Burlington County Prosecutor's Office raided the couple's Bordentown home. They took out bags of evidence and that BMW. D'Amico appeared relaxed, even swinging a golf club with his dog. So far, there have been no arrests or criminal charges, but the civil case has been put on hold pending the criminal investigation. Bobbitt is in rehab, and GoFundMe has agreed to reimburse any money allegedly misspent by the couple if proven true. I wish it didn't come to this. I, I wish, you know, I hate that it came to this. I hate, you know, 